Hey, what's up you guys? My name is Tyler Ruggie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be all about lighting for reptiles. Mainly we're going to be focusing on UV lighting because there is a ton of stuff I want to talk about and I'm so excited to make this video and just educate you guys about UV lighting and uh, we're going to be talking about a ton of different subjects in today's video. I just really want to go over everything and kind of make it more digestible and simplified than if you were to read an article online. I just want to make everything pretty straightforward just so everyone can learn about UV lighting. It's very, very crucial when it comes to reptile keeping, knowing what lights to use and how to properly use them. So things we're going to be talking about are mainly UVA and UVB lighting. We're going to be talking about what they do. We're going to be talking about different UVB bulbs and how to use them and which one to choose, how to know how much UVB your reptile needs, how to know which bulb to use and how to properly use it. Uh, I want to talk about coil UVB bulbs and kind of the negative stigma around them and whether or not they're actually harmful. Yeah, there's a lot we're going to go over in today's video. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to let me know down in the comments below. However, I definitely encourage you to watch the entire video to make sure I don't answer any questions first. But if by the end of this, you have any more questions, let me know down in the comments and I'll try to answer as many of them as possible. Yeah, overall, I just really want to get straight into this. I did a ton of research and digging to find all of this information and I'm going to link down below the sources that I used. Two of the main sources being uvguide.co.uk, which is actually a website that is all about research on UVB and keeping reptiles. And it started in 2005, and they are still updating information as they learn new things on this website. So it's very, very up to date. And they actually work with veterinarians, zookeepers, herpetologists, conservationalists, uh, major reptile lighting manufacturers and distributors, as well as simply people who are hobbyists in the reptile world. So this is a very reliable source of information based on studies that are done. Again, that will be linked down in the description below, as well as I took a look at the Journal of Zoo and Aquarium Research. And I actually printed the article out. It's an entire article that's based all around UV lighting and different bulbs and all this research that was done. So this is an article that I will also link down below. And these are really good articles I would definitely recommend reading if you want to just learn in depth more about these subjects. And on top of those two articles, I also did talk to Ashley and Andrew from ZooMed. They are the lighting and educational specialists over at ZooMed, so they know a ton about reptile lighting. So I might also include some clips from that Skype call so they can kind of explain some stuff to you guys because I think hearing some of it directly from them will be helpful. Let's just get straight into it. I'm gonna just start off by talking about different types of lighting that there are. So there is UVA, UVB, UVC, visible light, infrared light, and then there's also some other stuff that isn't, you know, necessary to even mention at all like x-rays, microwaves, stuff like that. The main things you need to know if you're keeping reptiles are infrared, visible light, UVA, and UVB. Mainly in this video we're going to focus on UVA and UVB. So just to get the other ones out of the way, there is infrared light, which is literally basically just heat. There's visible light, which to put it blatantly is the light that you just see. It is the color spectrum. It's literally just the light that you see. Like I said, there's UVA and UVB, which I'm going to go in depth about, but there's also something called UVC, which is pretty irrelevant to talk about in this conversation. So UVC is actually harmful to living cells, and it is naturally filtered out of the sunlight by our ozone layer. So, you know, living organisms, we actually don't really come in contact with UVC. It's harmful for us. It's not something that is given off by reptile lighting. It's not something we want to give to our reptiles. So we're pretty much not going to talk about UVC at all because all you need to know is it's harmful and we don't come in contact with it, so it doesn't really matter in this conversation. Basically what that leaves us with is the basis of this video, which is going to be UVA and UVB. First, I want to talk about UVA. 
because it's going to be a little bit less in depth than UVB. There's a lot I want to talk about UVB. So UVA is an ultraviolet light, obviously, that is given off by most reptile bulbs, basking bulbs, and UVB bulbs. Usually will give off UVA light as well. And if you're ever unsure of this, it will usually say directly on the box, like UVA and UVB. So UVA is a form of light that us humans actually can't see. However, reptiles actually can see UVA. Most reptiles are equipped with a fourth cone in their retina that allows them to see UVA light. And UVA light pretty much dictates how reptiles see their environment and know to interact with their environment. So it can get kind of confusing because again, humans don't see UVA the way reptiles do. So UVA gives reptiles different cues that allows them to interact with not only their environment, but each other. So it gives reptiles cues to kind of identify what their food is and what to eat. It gives them breeding cues, you know, how to interact with each other and reproduce. And overall, if you're not giving your reptile UVA, it can be bad because then they can't necessarily identify their food. They can't identify other reptiles of the same species and it can just lead to them not eating or not being as active in their environment. Again, it's hard to explain since we don't see it. I'm not sure if any of you guys have seen this, but insects kind of can see UVA light in the same way reptiles do where it gives them cues. So there are visual representations of what bees see when they look at a flower. So when we look at a flower, we might just see like a yellow flower and we just see the color yellow. However, when a bee looks at a flower, they see a wide spectrum of colors coming from that flower that kind of lets them know that this is a flower, I need to go pollinate and interact with this thing. The reason for this is the UVA light that is given off by the sun. So it's kind of like the same thing with reptiles where they see a different spectrum of colors because of the UVA light interacting with their environment. And this is really important because again, it gives your reptile cues to kind of eat, know what their food is, know how to interact with their environment properly. So again, we usually provide UVA to reptiles in the form of like a basking bulb or a UV bulb. And not only that, but UVA light actually does come from the sun and can go through windows and isn't filtered out. So that's a big difference between UVA and UVB is that UVB gets filtered out of the sunlight when it comes through glass or a window, which is why if you had a tank that you put by a window, your reptile isn't going to get UVB from it. However, the UVA will still come through the glass. So that's one of the reasons why you shouldn't just keep your reptile in like a dark room all day, even if they don't require a light, they still need their UVA to interact with their environment. So this is where it becomes really important to provide your reptile with an appropriate photo period because then they are getting their UVA, which gives them signals to interact with their environment throughout the day. Without UVA, your reptile will be colorblind essentially and won't be able to properly interact with their environment. So UVA is actually very important to provide for your reptiles. You need to make sure your reptiles have appropriate photo periods. Photo periods, you wanna replicate what it would be in the wild for them. It's usually between eight to 14 hours, depending on where they live in the wild and what time of year it is. Most reptiles people usually have for a photo period of around, I would say 10 to 12 hours is pretty common. And this just means the amount of time, again, that you're having the lights on and then turning them off. So you wanna keep the lights on around 10 to 12 hours, but this can also differ from different reptiles and where they're from and what time of the year it is. And their photo period can again affect how much they eat, whether or not they choose to hibernate, whether or not they choose to breed. So photo period actually does play a huge role in reptile keeping and it's something you do need to keep in mind is how long you're gonna keep your lights on. And I always recommend keeping a timer on lights so that you don't have to worry about remembering to turn them on and off all the time unless you have like a very strict wake up, turn on the lights at a certain time, turn them off at a certain time. But it's a lot easier to just keep them on a timer so you know that you're having them on a routine photo period that is appropriate for them. So next, we're going to talk about the big one, which is UVB. This is something that I think a lot of people get confused about, and it's really important to understand exactly what UVB does and how it works, because that's going to help you make more informed decisions on what products to use for your reptiles and how to properly use them. 
So this is actually really, really important. So just to kind of tell you guys what exactly UVB does is UVB interacts with your reptile's skin and it allows them to synthesize their own vitamin D3. And then they use the vitamin D3 in order to absorb calcium. So if your reptile isn't getting UVB, then your reptile will not be producing vitamin D3 and therefore they cannot absorb calcium properly. So if you have a reptile that isn't on UVB and you're just giving them calcium, they're not going to absorb it properly because they're not getting their vitamin D3. Now this is kind of where I wanted to start talking about the supplementation of vitamin D3 because it is important when keeping reptiles in captivity to supplement them with vitamin D3, but it's the question of how much vitamin D3 should I be supplementing my reptile if I'm giving them UVB and they're producing their own vitamin D3 because reptiles actually can overdose on vitamin D3 it's not super easy to have a reptile overdose on D3. You have to literally be giving your reptile D3 like every single day for them to overdose, or at least a lot, but it can happen. So something that needs to be made clear is that if a reptile is just producing their own vitamin D3, they can't overdose. If a reptile is under UVB and they're producing D3, they're only going to produce the amount of D3 that they need in order to absorb the right amount of calcium. They're not going to overproduce D3 on their own. The only way vitamin D3 can be overdosed is when it's being supplemented to our reptiles through our vitamins and calcium with D3 that we give them. So this kind of begs the question of why do we supplement D3 for reptiles? And the reason for that is because UV lights that we give our reptiles in captivity don't adequately replicate the sun. There's yes. calcium with D3 and without D3. So if your <laughs> reptile is getting UVB, do they just need calcium without D3 or do they need it with D3 as well? That's a really good question. Um, usually what we recommend is if your animal is living outdoors and has natural exposure to full, like natural sunlight, you know, you have a big sulfata or something like that, or you live where the the weather is beautiful and you don't have to keep them inside, I would definitely use calcium without D3. Okay. Uh, if you have an animal that's living indoors, then you may want to rotate utilizing calcium with or calcium without D3. There's also multivitamins, like we have a Reptivite product yeah. that's available with and without D3. So you might want to rotate that and give that occasionally, you know, give it with D3 sometimes, because as good as our UVB lighting is, nothing is the same as the sun. Yeah. And in a way, that's a good thing. You know, we don't really want to replicate exactly what the sun is inside, because we're not replicating everything else that they have, right. you know, acres and acres of land yeah. and trees and six foot deep burrows and, you know, all the other options they would have out in the wild. Also, you know, predators and, you know, yeah. droughts and things like that. But um, but it's it's not exactly the same. So from time to time, it is um, it is advised to supplement with some vitamin D three. You just don't want to use calcium with D three and Reptivite with D three and give it you know every single day or something like that. It's going to be difficult to overdose on it. But when you utilize the UVB lighting, you kind of you know are, are able to to fill in those gaps mm -hmm. uh, that that could be left in the diet too. So with UV lighting, obviously the reptiles are still going to produce their own D3 in captivity. However, it's just helpful to supplement some D3 in there as well to make sure they're getting enough to absorb all the calcium they need. So most people, when supplementing D3 for the reptiles, only do it maybe once or twice a week. You can maybe get calcium without D3 and then get a multivitamin with D3. Or also you can just switch back and forth between calcium with and without D3. Just as long as you're not giving your reptiles D3 all the time, they shouldn't overdose, they shouldn't really have any issues. Just supplement with D3 every so often to make sure they're getting a little extra in their diet. Vitamin D3 is a fat-soluble vitamin, so when your reptiles are consuming D3, 
they store it, and if they get too much of it, they don't really have a way of getting rid of it. Whereas a water-soluble vitamin, if they got too much of it, they could just kind of flush it out of their system, whatever they don't need to use. But since D3 is fat-soluble, they can't do that, so it just builds up in their system, and that's when an overdose happens, is if they get way too much of it that they're not using. But again, this can just be avoided by rotating your vitamins and your calciums and only using D3 every so often and not all the time. So then you might be wondering, how do reptiles that don't bask out in the sunlight all the time get their D3? Some reptiles, snakes in particular, can get their vitamin D3 just from their whole prey diets. They will just consume the D3 that they need from what they eat. There's also the conversation of nocturnal animals that aren't super active during the day. What do they do? And to answer that question, even nocturnal reptiles have some sort of exposure to UV. You can't just escape the sunlight even if you're nocturnal. A lot of these reptiles might be active during dawn or dusk where there's really low levels of UV exposure. And not only that, but a lot of them are sleeping during the day in shaded areas that are still getting exposure to small levels of UV. So for example, like crested geckos that live in the trees, they're nocturnal, but they might be sleeping like underneath a leaf where they're still getting small exposure to UV light. And in captivity, we don't necessarily consider that to be a requirement for them because they can survive perfectly fine without UV light and just some D3 supplementation, but they actually can benefit from small amounts of UV light. So some people do like to give their nocturnal species a UV light that's really low strength so that they are getting some exposure, kind of like they would in the wild. But it kind of gets into personal preference of how you want to do it. So next, we're gonna get into the important topic of how to choose which bulb is the one you wanna use for your reptile, because there are a ton of different basking bulbs, UVB bulbs, bulbs that provide heat and UVB. So it just begs the question of which one should I use for what reptile I have. A lot of it comes down to personal preference because a lot of the bulbs provide similar things, just at different amounts. It depends on things like how much UVB the bulb is putting out, and then what distance the bulb is going to be from the basking spot. So, the first thing you need to understand is how UVB is being measured. So there's a thing called UV index, which is a way we measure UVB as far as how it synthesizes vitamin D3 and at what levels it does so. And then, based on the UV index, there are these things called Ferguson zones. So, to try to put it very simply, Ferguson zones are mapped out across the world. Different areas have different Ferguson zones, depending on how much UV exposure that area gets. So, UV index is something you might hear a lot on the Weather Channel, if you're watching it and they talk about, oh, today's a high UV index, meaning you should wear sunscreen because there's a lot of UV exposure and it's gonna burn your skin. Those are days where the UV index is really high. Other days, the UV index will be really low, which means there might be like a lot of shade, just not a lot of UV is going to be hitting the surface where we are. So different reptiles require different UV indexes and come from different Ferguson zones. So ZooMed provided me with this extremely helpful poster, which if you wanna reference this poster, there's like a similar guide on their website you can follow that's pretty much the same thing. I know the lighting situation isn't the best, but basically here we have the UV index, zero to one, one to two, two to three, three to six, and then there's seven and up. Seven and up is considered dangerous, but zero to one is partial sun, which would be the Ferguson zone one and two. And then there's UVI index of one to two and two to three, which gets into Ferguson zone three. And then when it gets to three to six, it's Ferguson zone four. And then there's this graph, which again, if you wanna take a closer look, it's on the ZooMed website. And it has all of the ZooMed UVB products. And it will say right here, the distance that it's going to be from the basking spot. 
and then it measures the UV index and what Ferguson zone it's going to be in. And it's all color coded. So green would be zone one, lighter green two, yellow three, orange four, and red is in the danger zone. So as you can see, Mercury Vapor Bulb is a really good bulb that provides heat and UVB, which is really good for reptiles that are midday baskers, like bearded dragons. So if you have the 100 watt power sun, you know, four inches from the basking spot, it's going to be a dangerous level of UVB. Whereas if you have it closer to like six or seven inches from the basking spot, it'll be like the perfect amount of UVB for a bearded dragon. So to determine what level of UVB your reptile needs, all you need to know is where they come from in the wild. So let's just pretend a bearded dragon wasn't super common and I couldn't just look up how much UVB a bearded dragon needs. And I just wanted to figure out how much UVB should a bearded dragon get? All I need to figure out is where a bearded dragon comes from, Australia. I just need to figure out where they're from in Australia and figure out what the UV index is in Australia or what the Ferguson zone is. If I find out the UV index, I can calculate which Ferguson zone it would be in. And then I just need to replicate that with one of these bulbs. So bearded dragons are in Ferguson zone four which means they need a UVI of 2.6 to 3.5 plus, they're midday baskers. So I would want any of the bulbs that are in like the orange area on this map, which is a lot of them. The difference between them all is the strength of UVB that it's putting out. You could technically give a bearded dragon enough UVB with like one of these coil bulbs, but it would just have to be very close to the basking spot in order for it to provide the correct amount of UVB which is why most people recommend for bearded dragons, you know, keeping them more like with either a linear UVB bulb because they have a higher output and a broader spectrum. So it doesn't have to be quite as close to the basking spot or you could go with a power sun, which will provide your bearded dragon with heat and UVB. And what's really cool about this UVB article from the Journal of Zoo and Aquarium Research that I have is they actually list all different species of reptiles. There's multiple pages, but this is just one of them. It's like too bright for me to even show you, but it'll show you the scientific name of the reptile, the common name, what biome they're in, Ferguson zone, photo period, basking temperature, ambient temperature, and all the information you need. And ZooMed actually provided me with a digital UV index radiometer. This is something that you can purchase. It is pretty pricey, but it's not necessary for keeping reptiles. You don't need to measure the UV output of all of your bulbs because that information is provided right on the packaging. But what this does, it's really cool, is you just press this button and it will tell you the UV index of, you know, the light coming down on it. So right now it's zero because I'm just in my bedroom and you know, the UVB is filtered through the windows. So I'm not getting any UVB right now because I'm inside and I don't have a UV bulb above me. But you can actually go outside and measure the UV index with this outside and see what the UV index is where you live. You can put this underneath a UV bulb and you want the top of this to be level with like where your reptile would be basking and you can just press this button and measure the amount of UV that your bulbs are putting off. And again, this is measured in the UV index and there is a reference on the top that tells you the Ferguson zones, one, two, three, and four, and which Ferguson zone each UV index falls under. So again, this isn't necessarily necessary if you're keeping reptiles because all UVB bulbs are gonna tell you what output they are on the packaging and what distance to keep them from the basking spot. So you can easily just follow that. I just really wanted one of these because I keep so many different reptiles that require UV light and I just really wanted to be able to measure and just, you know, play with it a little bit and just learn more about the different bulbs and stuff. It's really just for my own personal satisfaction more than anything. This is by no means required. I just thought it was a really, really cool device. And if it's something you're interested in, it's really cool because you can measure the output of your bulbs, kind of determine exactly when they need to be replaced. But again, uh, you're perfectly fine just by following the instructions on the packaging as far as when the manufacturer recommends replacing the bulb. This leads to the next very important thing, which is UV bulbs do need to be replaced regularly again. You can just follow the manufacturer's instructions as far as when the bulb needs to be replaced. And the reason for this is because 
Over time, the UVB output decays with use with the bulbs just because the bulbs get worn out. Something else you want to keep in mind when you're choosing what bulb to use for your reptile is albino and hypomelanistic reptiles. Albino and hypomelanistic reptiles have a lack of pigmentation in their skin and eyes, which allows for more radiation absorption in their skin from the ultraviolet rays, which means that they're much more sensitive to visible and ultraviolet light. So because they're much more sensitive to light, they're a lot more at risk for having their skin damaged from excess amounts of light. Therefore, even if it's a reptile that requires UV exposure, if it's albino or hypomelanistic, you want to give them less UV than you would give the normal morph of the reptile because they are much more sensitive. And the reason you can give albino and hypomelanistic reptiles a lower output UVB bulb is because the lack of melanin in their skin allows for more UVB to be absorbed by their epidermal cells. So adequate D3 synthesis is still possible with a lowered amount of UV because of this. And giving them the same amount of UV you would give a normal reptile that isn't albino can actually damage them. And if you have any questions or doubts about what UV bulb you should be using for a hypomelanistic or an albino animal, I would definitely recommend consulting a veterinarian and kind of deciding with them what is the best one to use because it does get a little bit confusing as they are much more sensitive to light. So the next thing that I wanted to talk about is can a reptile get too much UVB? Like yes, we know it's important to make sure the bulb is close enough to the reptile and putting out enough UVB that they can synthesize vitamin D3, but can they get too much UVB? Is there such thing as giving them too strong of a bulb or putting it too close to them? And the answer to that is yes. What is often caused by too much exposure to UVB is called photokeratoconjunctivitis, which is also known as snow blindness. So to put it on simple terms, it's called snow blindness because it's similar to what happens when the ground is covered in snow on a very sunny day. If you go outside and you look at the snow, it kind of hurts your eyes because all the UVB from the sun is reflecting off of the snow and almost like magnifying it into your eyes and it hurts your eyes, right? So the same thing's happening to your reptiles when you put a UV bulb either too close to them or you're using a UV bulb that is too high of an output for whatever species you are keeping. Because some reptiles' eyes are much more sensitive than others. If you're using too strong of a UV bulb, it can actually cause photokeratoconjunctivitis. And you can tell if your reptile has this usually if they're keeping their eyes closed all the time. And a lot of the times people actually don't know that their reptile has this until they realize that their reptile has stopped eating and drinking because reptiles that have their eyes closed all the time aren't going to eat or drink, and it's gonna cause other health issues that way. So that is one of the main issues that happens if your reptile gets too much UVB exposure, it will really hurt their eyes. Last but not least, what I wanted to talk about is the myth that coil UVB bulbs are evil and you should not use them and they're dangerous. I had a lot of people who wanted me to ask Zoomed why they make coil UVB bulbs and what they're good for and aren't they harmful. And there is truth to the fact that they can be harmful, but like I just said, any UVB bulb can be harmful to a reptile if it is not used properly. So if you put a coil UV bulb way too close to a reptile, it's going to hurt their eyes. So I wanna, you know, revert to this poster over here. If you look at the Reptisun 10.0 coil bulb, it says it's in the danger zone if it's three inches or four inches. And it even has a really high output at five and six inches. So if you're putting this bulb on a reptile that requires not a whole lot of UVB, then yeah, it's probably not going to be too good for them. Same with the Reptisun 10.0 Mini. It has a pretty high output of UVB, so if you give this to a reptile that requires a pretty low amount of exposure, it's going to probably be damaging to them. Another place that this kind of idea comes from that they are really bad for your reptiles is that there actually were issues with coil UVB bulbs in the mid-2000s, so around, I think, 12 to 14 years ago. 
There were issues with the phosphorus coating on the bulbs, allowing an incorrect amount of UVB to come out. So therefore, around this time, people who were using these bulbs were having issues with like their chameleons and different things, having their eyes hurt and be damaged by these bulbs because they were defective during this time period. Since then, for the past like 10 years, this issue has been resolved and these bulbs are actually putting out the right amount of UVB they should be putting out. So there actually, at the moment, isn't anything wrong with using them as long as you're following the guide and using them properly and have them at the correct distance and you're using them on the right species. Okay, so it's a website run by Francis Baines, who's like an authority on UVB lighting and reptiles. Okay. And it's, um, they do a lot of independent research. We send them products to test, um, but they also will go buy products in their local pet stores to test. And they do a ton of testing on them. Um, and they've got some really nice visuals that show like what the spread of the light is. So if you have a linear fluorescent, you know, you expect the spread to be kind of like this, where if you have a compact, it might be more like this. Some of them have more of almost a cone shape um, because you, when you have this coil lamp, you've bundled all these UVB um, tubes right next to each other. So it's going to be stronger down here where, you know, the, it's not going to spread out that much this way. Mm -hmm. um, the UVB is really going to penetrate in a different way. So understanding that shape is another thing to kind of take into consideration when you're choosing a lamp too. So that's a good website to kind of check out and see um, – as far as like, you know, what does the spread look like? And again, totally independent research. Mm -hmm. We we send them stuff to test, but they also go out and buy their own, not involved in their testing at all. And they test a lot of different um, manufacturers bulbs. When you're choosing a bulb, it really will depend on what you're looking for. It's kind of like personal preference. So like I said, you just need to follow the Ferguson zones and the UV index. So with any reptile, you can figure out what bulb they need by figuring out what the Ferguson zone is, where they come from. So as long as you're following this guide and using a bulb at the correct distance to give them the right amount of exposure for the Ferguson zone they're in, you should be all good. You just have different bulbs that are for different purposes. So for example, all of these compact UVB bulbs come in different strengths, as you can see, but the difference between a compact bulb and a linear bulb, compact bulb is going to have more of a focused beam of UVB in one spot, whereas a linear bulb will have a much wider range of UVB within the enclosure. So if you have an enclosure that's really long and you want to have a good portion of your long enclosure have, you know, a gradient of UVB, a linear bulb is really good. Whereas if you have a smaller enclosure, you might want to use a compact bulb to just focus UVB in one area. And something that you also want to take into consideration is you don't want your entire enclosure to be UVB. You want your reptile to have a gradient where they can kind of decide how much UVB they're getting, and you want them to be able to go to an area where they're not really getting any UVB so that they can kind of get shade. Because in the wild, they're not being exposed to UVB all the time. Like, they can come out and bask when they want, and then when they want to stop basking, they can go into the shade. Just comes to personal preference as long as you're giving the proper amount of UV. So a good example is bearded dragons. You can easily just give a bearded dragon a mercury vapor power sun that's going to give them a really hot basking spot and also provide UVB. Technically, just using mercury vapor bulb isn't incorrect for a bearded dragon. It's going to give your bearded dragon focused heat and UVB on their basking spot, which is a good thing. However, a lot of people still prefer to use a separate basking heat bulb and then a linear UVB bulb on top of that just because it's personal preference. Not necessarily like one is right and one is wrong, it just depends what you like. A lot of people like the linear bulbs because it brightens up the entire enclosure a lot more and it looks nicer, but at the end of the day, if you're just using a mercury vapor bulb, there isn't necessarily anything wrong with that because you're still providing your bearded dragon with the same amount of UVB that it needs, as well as the right amount of heat, as long as you have all the bulbs at proper distances from the basking spot. So yeah, I think that's 
pretty much everything I wanted to go over in this video. Once again, I'm going to link the articles that I read down below so you can kind of read further into it and get a better understanding of everything. Again, a huge thanks to ZoomEd for helping me out with this video. And I actually even took a course online from ZoomEd that taught me all about UV lighting. It was like a course that they usually provide to people who work in veterinary offices and maybe retail associates to give them a better understanding of how it all works. But they allowed me to take the course because I was doing this video and I just wanted to learn as much as possible about it. So thank you ZoomEd so much, love you guys. So yeah, that is it for today's video. If you guys liked it, if you found it helpful, make sure you hit a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, I post videos every week. Also don't forget to check out my social media and my vlog channel, this will be linked down in the description below. And I will see you guys in my next video.